Hey there everyone, how's it going? It's Jeff the IT Guy. Today, we're gonna be upgrading a Dell XPS 17. This is one of the new ones here. This has a 10850, which is an eight core, uh, 16 thread Intel CPU. It comes with a RTX 2060 Max-Q in it, as well as stock it came with 512 uh, for the SSD, which is NVMe, and 16 gigs of RAM. 512 gigs isn't enough of NVMe space for me. So we're gonna be adding into it another drive. This is a Crucial P5, one terabyte. The reason we're going with this is because it's a good price to performance uh, drive. So I'll have this linked below. So you're gonna need one of these. We're also gonna be upgrading it to 32 gigs of RAM. This is G-Skill DDR4. This is 3200 megahertz. Uh, which is what this system runs. Um, if you are wanting to replace the drive in here, there'll be a video linked. You will need um, some form of USB-C uh, device that you can actually plug in your NVMe drive into so that you can use something like a Cronus to copy it over to the uh, drive that you pick up. So that'll be linked up in the description below of how to do that. You're also gonna need a tool set. We're gonna be using the iFixit kit. And so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna upgrade this and I'm gonna show you how to do it. That way you can follow along and you should be set and ready to go. Before we get started though, this thing uh, will max out at 64 gigs of RAM. You can upgrade both NVMe spaces. You can put one terabyte or two terabyte NVMe in both of those. And so you can really kit this out and be tuned or stay tuned actually for the review of this machine that'll be happening here soon. So let's go ahead and let's get ready to upgrade this. Here we have it, it's turned off, it's flipped over onto its back. We gotta take this back plate off. Yes, this is from the Dell outlet, it's been refurbished. It's a great place to pick up, you know, good Dell goodness um, at a discounted price. And so according to this, it is a T5. You will need a T5 bit to get these screws out. So let's take those out. Put them to the side. Do not lose them. So go ahead, just unscrew these all the way. All right, so once you get all those out, there's a total of eight of them. You're gonna want to take the back off. Now, it should just lift up, but if not, you might have to use a little bit of a prying tool or something. I've got these plastic pick looking things that I'll use. Here on the front, you might not be able to see it, but there's a little spot here that you can actually get up under this, like so. Let me show you that. Yeah, it's at the very bottom here. Just kind of pry it open. Be careful not to break anything. And then you might hear some snap crackles and pops, but just use this, this little thing, and just pry it open, going from one side to the other, and go all the way around it, like so. Be careful, you don't want to break it. It's not what we're here to do. Okay, like I said, you'll hear it kind of pop and you'll see it start to come off. Let me show you, that's what it'll look like. So once you get done at the front, you can start moving along the sides. So as you can see here, I'm starting to go down the side. Just take your time with it. There's no rush. Just let it snap, crackle, and pop. And it will eventually start to pry off. Just be easy. You don't want to force it through. So go down part of one side, then start to go down part of the other side, just taking your, I'm gonna lay it down here and go down the side some more. Try not to push it back on. After we've done all that work. This is one of the hardest back plates that I've ever had to take off, but it is what it is. The reason I'm using this uh, plastic one is because it's less likely to tear anything and less likely to scratch anything. Take it and lift up. Now you can lift, once you get the front and the sides almost all the way off, you can start to lift up on it. And there it comes. Comes off 
Okay, so once you get the back off of it, what we've got to do is we've got to disconnect the battery. There's just going to be this pull tab right here. Just take it, pull up gently. You'll hear a little pop. Boom, there we go. It's done. Okay, so once you get the back off and the battery disconnected, which is right here, you need to find you a screwdriver. According to my kit, this is the number two Phillips. So go ahead, you're going to take out this screw right here. Okay, which is also on the battery, and then there's one right here. Let me get this in better frame for you. There you go, one right here. Just go ahead, take those two out. Don't lose them. Let's see if we can get any closer for you. There we go. So here it is, just take it and it will lift out like so. Just have to lift up. I took the other screw out over here. So now we need to get our NVMe drive. This one here, this Crucial P5. So go ahead and open it up. Once you get it out, go ahead, put it in here. It just slots in like so. Push it down. Then all you gotta do is lift back up on the battery, push it down, and then get your screws and put your screws in. Okay, once you get that screwed back in, you can screw in the other side of the battery because we don't need it unscrewed anymore. So let's screw it in. It's down here on this other side of the battery. Okay, now it's time for the RAM. For the RAM, all you gotta do is lift up on this flap, push right here on the sides, pull these out like so. There you go. Those are the SK Hynix. Now we can take out our G-Skill DDR4. Put these bad boys in. Well, we can go real fast. Okay, so it's just gonna go in. Make sure it slots up correctly. Lift this tab up again. Here on the side. Just line the slots up. That's all you got to do. Go in at about a 45 degree angle inside the slot. Push down until it clicks. Rinse and repeat. In at a 45 degree angle. Push down. Boom, boom. Make sure they're seated. I'm gonna double check just because I'm retentive about it. It's in just fine. Okay, and now you, all you're ready to do is connect the battery. It's right here. So let me get that for you. Okay, connect the battery on this tab right here. Just take it, line it up. Okay. Push it in, don't push super firm. I mean, you want it to go into place. It'll only go in one way. And now we are ready to go back to put the back plate on or the rear of the computer, rear of the device. So let's take it. It only lines up one way. There is a pin, let me show you. There's a pin right here, okay? And it corresponds with this hole right here. So just try and line everything up. Don't force it. You don't want to force anything in this situation. Okay. It'll line up. Just take it, push down to where it pops, which it will. It'll pop into place. You'll feel it. Everything's good. Get rid of your Phillips. Go back to your T5 and start putting in your screws. 
I am going to start at the rear here. So let's take them, put them in. I separated mine. I put them in the three different piles so that I knew what was the rear, what was the sides, and what was the front. Now we're tight. Now it's time for the last couple. Okay, once you get those screwed in, everything's ready. Check it on the sides, make sure it looks good. Looks good on my side. Now it's time to make sure that it turns on. I got some gunk on it. Oh well. So open it up. Hit the power button. There you go. As you can see, it is starting up. Might take it a minute on this first boot. Okay. So this says the time of day is not um, set. The reason for that is because we, you know, undid or we 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 took the battery out. So of course the time of day. So it, it'll give you an error that the time of day is not set. Um, let's go ahead, hit continue with that, or you can do your bio setup, however you want to do it. And as you can see, it's going to boot up into Windows. Now this drive's not going to be usable straight out of the gate. You need to go in to uh, Windows, go to partition a hard drive, find the one that has not been allocated um, or utilized, whatever they call it and go ahead and utilize that drive or initiate it, so it's called, it's not been initialized. Go in and initiate that drive and you are ready to go. You've added extra storage and RAM to your Dell XPS. This works for the 15 and the 17. So go ahead, if you like this video, leave me a like. Go ahead and subscribe, show the support. I really dig it. Um, that way I can keep these videos coming, keep showing y'all how to do this stuff and leave a comment and let me know how your experience goes. Thanks for watching. This has been Jeff, the IT guy. Go ahead and keep it real.